The Grind Waterfowl TV is brought to you by Dakota Decoy. Premium gunning decoys for demanding hunters. Lucky Duck. Masters of deception. Kent Cartridge. Quality matters and performance counts. Mud Buddy. The king of mud motors. Excel. The boat to own. Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy. The most accessible online retriever training program. Yoder Smokers. Handcrafted in the heartland. Rig'em Right Waterfowl, the industry leader in specialty waterfowl products. On X Hunt, know where you stand. Vanelli, simply perfect. Cowboys Wild Game Washer, as clean as you can get them. And these fine sponsors. This week on The Grind, Bill travels to Southeast Missouri to hunt with Shane Garner, owner and operator of SEMO Outfitters. With properties in three states, Shane has no shortage of opportunities to chase late season ducks. Also joining Bill are Wally and Don from Southern Oak Kennels North. After a short break from hunting season, Hank is back with The Grind crew, but with Wally, Hank's owner and trainer in the blind, Bill gets to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This migration has been so wacky this year. We've had warm temps all the way up into Saskatchewan. It's really slowed down the migration. The South Dakota, North Dakota birds, we did get an early little front come through storm, push those all south. Shane here at SEMO picked them up. They picked them up in Arkansas. And then honestly, in the Dakotas, we lost the birds. So this is really only our second hunt of the year. And I mean, it's crunch time. Uh, we got down here December 30th, but uh, uh, rain, that's been the story so far. Um, everyone's checking their phone app about every two minutes to see if they're calling off the rain. And I don't know if you can hear it right now, but it's raining and it's rained solid for uh, coming up on 24 hours now. Um, I know they're over two inches already, but uh, I'm not a rain hunter, but I will be from now on. Well, your dog's up? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna hold on. Yeah, usually, like we had that at the kennel, the um, rod that goes down inside. I told these guys, I said, when the guy who owns the farm gets lost in the fog, you yeah. know it's foggy. Yeah. Well, we are hunting New Year's Eve day, um, and we are in southeast Missouri with Shane Garner from SEMO Outfitters. Uh, it's been a couple years since we've been down here with Shane. Um, since we were here last, he's picked another piece of property up, and we're actually in Illinois. Kind of, kind of cool. I've told the guys this morning, I've hunted a lot of states. A lot of licenses bought. This is the first time I've ever hunted Illinois. And Illinois is a, traditionally, a, I mean, it's a duck killing mecca. So I'm kind of, kind of anxious to be here. Uh, a couple, three weeks ago, Hank left me, uh, went back with Wally. Uh, he got to go make some puppies. So Wally and Don from Southern Oak Kennels are with us this morning also. And this is my reunion with Hank this year. And then he'll be with us the rest of the year. So. Uh, I'm going to let Ru Wally run Hank today. Wally is the man. He's, uh, uh, Hank is Wally's personal dog, so it's going to be kind of fun for me. I told Wally, I was joking with, it's kind of fun for him to have the pressure on running Hank and not me. So uh, he's, Hank's fired up. He knows what's going on, and he remembered me. It's only been a couple weeks, so so should be fun. But I've never hunted with Wally and Dom, so this is a first. So we'll go see what Wally can get done with Hank.
Woody's. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him, Wally. Sweet. We got Hank's master whipping. <laughs> <laughs> Took just a little bit of sun up and it's helping, but those were finicky. And I'd, sometimes these late season ducks, you, you just got to watch them. I'd, I thought I was over calling. The minute I'd quit calling, they'd kind of peel out. So they just kind of, I just kind of just give them a little back, 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 and they, they liked it. One Drake really liked it and kind of brought them in. But just got to watch the ducks. I honestly thought I was over calling, but when I'd quit calling, they'd leave. So I just stayed on them. I got a couple of them out of there, but. See if we can't pick away at them here. What we're gonna call this morning here, the first morning with Shane Garner and SEMO Outfitters. Uh, we had a beautiful little hole. Awesome, Miss Shane's new little piece of property he has. We're actually in Illinois. We set up out there, uh, we had no wind, uh, fog, and clouds. And we still scratched out a few ducks. Um, we're gonna go get some lunch. Uh, the ducks have been hitting another little spot on Shane's property here, so we're gonna take a run over there and take a look at that. But we're kind of torn. Shane doesn't know if we should come right back here to this little food plot and hunt this afternoon or go over to the other little hole the ducks have been roosting all morning. So he keeps looking at me wanting me to make the decision and I say, Shane, this is your gig. And he says, no, this is your gig. So we'll go look at what we got to deal with this afternoon, uh, get some lunch in us, come back for an afternoon shoot and try and wrap up this first day. And actually we're in Illinois, almost in Southeast Missouri, but uh, SEMO Outfitters. So 
So after the morning hunt, uh, we regrouped and I could hear the gears grinding in Shane's brain. You know, he wasn't, we weren't quite sh sure what to do. We were in flooded Milo but, and the ducks didn't come to feed in the morning, but they were hitting that pond. So we sat and talked, tried to figure out, do we want to hit the pond in the afternoon or go back to the same flooded Milo that we were in in the morning with hopes that they'd, they were feeding late afternoon coming out. Uh, we chose a Milo and it wouldn't have mattered. There wasn't a lot of ducks moving. Um, we did pick up a little bit of wind and two or three of the ducks that we did kill came, they did it right. They, they hung there with their feet down. So uh, it, it was re really funny though, cause Shane didn't want to make the call and I didn't want to make the call, but we jointly decided to hit the same spot. It, it worked out, it was a fun hunt. Mark, so I want to share a tip with you. One of the most important things that you can do besides teaching your dog how to be in the blind, the blind manners, and what that means is being calm, hanging out until they're told to go, is what we call steadiness. And the reason we do this is, let's say we're in a blind, we've got other people with us, other, just lots of people in the blind, we're shooting, there's a lot of chaos. As the dog person, it's up to you to, one, communicate to your fellow uh, people in the blind, and it's up to you to also to communicate with your dog. And so understanding is crucial here. And your dog needs to understand its place, meaning it doesn't go until you tell it to go. And the reason that is, is after all the shooting's done, me personally, I like to try to find out where all the birds are since I'm normally the dog guy. Or if there's two of it, two people in the blind that are dog guys, then we gotta communicate back and forth so that we can make sure that we're not running all over each other and that it's a just beautiful scene of efficiency so that we get the birds back as quickly as possible. And so to do that, I love to do what I call delayed retrieves. But before I show you a delayed retrieve, let me show you a short clip just to give you a real world example out of one of our hunts from last year so you can see what that looks like in the real world. Here comes the woodies. The fellas get ready. Woodies are pouring in like you've never seen it. Here we go. Kill him. Nice! Right there! Nice. I'll send my dog. Eve! Hey, Woody Drake. Eve, here. Good girl. Dad. So that's an example of what it looks like in the real world. And now let me show you a delayed retrieve, or what we call delayed marked retrieve. The whole time you and I have been talking here, you've been hanging out with me here, this dog has been sitting here from where we threw the bumper to begin with. That is called a delayed marked retrieve. She is waiting. You know, you're not just throwing the dummy and then sending your dog immediately. The dog is waiting for your command. My dog here, I'm not gonna say her name because she will go, is waiting for my command. So let me go ahead and say her name, and that is what a delayed retrieve is. Just count it off. And let me tell you this before I send her, you can build your way up to this. You don't have to have your dog sit here forever. What I like to do when I'm first starting delayed retrieves is I'll count three seconds. One, two, three, in my head, not out loud, and then I'll send the dog. Then I'll work my way up to 10 seconds and then so on. Now, once you do that a lot, you can work your way up to as long as it takes. That gives you time to communicate to your fellow people in the blind. Violet. Dead. Good dog, good dog. And that is a delayed marked retrieve, and that is how you can start working on steadiness so that your dog is under control in the blind this season. So our New Year's Eve this year consisted of us all looking at our weather apps, trying to figure out where the wind was going to come from, uh, what time the heavy rains were coming in. Um, so with the rain and cameras, it's hard. It's hard on the camera guys. Uh, it's hard on gear. Uh, water and cameras don't mix, but the guys did a heck of a job keeping them dry. They had bags over the cameras. Um, the last time I hunted with Shane, he didn't have this field set up and he'd put in a new pit blind. 
really nice uh, watertight pit blind. And we thought with all this water coming in, that was probably going to be our best spot. While we was hunting in uh, Illinois yesterday afternoon, I called one of my sons, my youngest son, Jed, and had him watch the farm here. So that was another reason why we chose the pit that we did. He watched it yesterday afternoon to give us a good scouting report and told us that it was loading up pretty good with new ducks. And that gave us high hopes to go along with this comfortable blind and dry blind that we wasn't going there just for the weather, but we was going to go there to kill some ducks too. <laughs> Well, they have ruined my theory of South Dakota not hunting in the rain. Yeah. We've had more action already this morning than we had all day yesterday, and it is raining. So, Shane, I'm not sleeping in when it's raining at SEMO Outfitters either. <laughs> Oh. We got that on video, right? Okay. <laughs> there you go. Well, I can't believe you're giving him a pass. Oh, he's shooting a 20. He has zero excuse. Told you guys we needed to get out of bed this morning. 
<laughs> we need to be out there, guys. <laughs> We're calling our second morning. Uh, I think it's a little before 10 o'clock, New Year's Day. SEMO outfitter, Shane Garner, and no one really wanted to get out of bed this morning because it was raining, raining hard. And it's still raining, not as hard as it was, but uh, we just filled a uh, nice four-man limited ducks and go get some ducks cleaned, maybe cook some ducks this afternoon, have some duck poppers, maybe watch a little football. We're still undetermined exactly what we're going to do tomorrow. Uh, we're planning on going to another one of Shane's properties, but I can see the twinkle in Shane's eye. We, we may be staying put here. So picked up some new birds, he thinks. Uh, getting really cold up north. Uh, we had a little bit of north wind blowing and we saw way more ducks today than we've, we've seen since we've been here. So Shane picks up some ducks. We're going to go pick us some ducks. Pick up, get, get out of here, uh, go watch some football. New Year's Day. Next week on The Grind, we catch back up for Bill's last day at SEMO Outfitters. With cold weather pushing in and new ducks arriving by the hour, things are shaping up for another lights-out day in southeast Missouri.